Okay, Town of New Falls Planning Board meeting, January 13th. Amy Cohen is uh, here by remote. Um, we have meeting minutes from November 25th. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public comment. Is anyone here for public comment? <laughs> okay, so we have our first application. Oh, you know what? I would like to change the agenda a little bit. We're going to uh, eliminate uh, the, the CARA subdivision um, for tonight. Okay, so. Institute for Family Health. Contours, uh, validated wetland boundary, uh, trees greater than 12 inch, more information on the propane tanks and what they're actually building, and the generator, and then other information on the wetlands. And they essentially did all of it. Um, the updated map has all those things. And um, and also has a certified wetland boundary, which is probably the most important part of this. The DC certified where the wetland boundary is, and then showing the 100 foot adjacent area, they're out of that, the regulatory area for the DC. And um, it also shows a lot more about you know, what they're actually building, which is basically two underground propane tanks, generator, with a fence around. And one rooftop uh, AC condenser. Yeah. And now we have the details about the size and the components and all that. And mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Um, the one thing that we're still going to do though is the wetland inspector go out Wednesday morning to just confirm. Right. So um, 
New Falls has their own wetlands law, as we know. It's a 100-foot buffer, 100-foot setback as well. But I called Mark Care about it just to see if he wanted to also look at it to make sure it meets town wetland standards as well. And he said he should really should go take a look and make sure that we're ready for that. Okay, and that's going to be 8 a.m. on Wednesday. Okay, great. And did anyone want to go? Did anyone decide what they to go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I guess I was the only one that said to go. Okay, cool. All right, so then the only thing left was, that was the only thing left then, right? Um, just to make sure all the fences and things, there wasn't any little doofies on that. All right. So, is there, yeah. Does anybody well, have any questions? Uh, these propane tanks, uh, you do uh, cathodic protection or anything like that? Or? They will. Mm -hmm. It will be automatic. The, the, the soil has to be tested so they can uh, determine what type of protection it will be, but that will be done when the tanks go in. And are you going to own the tanks or is the company going to own them? They're going to be your tanks, so it's up to you to maintain them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do they have to be inspected at some kind of frequency? Or? Mm -hmm. so yep. We have an existing tank and generator there. I don't think it's subject to any inspection. We test that monthly and we have maintenance agreements on both to take pretty good care of that. Um, and our joint commission certification for all healthcare facilities has very strict requirements that we meet about the testing, maintenance, um, you know, on ongoing safety of that equipment. Even when it's buried. Mm -hmm. Any question about the location of the um, air conditioning component on the roof? Is that at the front of the building, at the back of the real building? Would that be visible from the street? How does it won't that be visible place? from the street. It's set back and the roof has a, a, a wall. Is that, is that wall? Um, yeah. I mean, you can't see any of the existing trees out of there now. So do you know how high the parapet is and how high the unit is? Just out of curiosity. Of head, oh, yeah. Forty-eight inches tall, tall, and the parapet is. I don't know. Do you know what that's how that is? Good location. Okay. Should be an elevation issue. This orientation. I just thought I just thought the plan of the street. Yeah. This generator will serve the call center that we built exclusively, along with the elevator. So it will run the um, so data portion is... of the equipment that's powering the call center, the lighting, the elevator, every receptacle within that call center. It's intended to be a 24 by 7 operation at some point that will handle appointments and telemedicine and prescription renewals for all of our locations in the Hudson Valley and in the city. And what size generator is it? It's here. So it actually places more. Mm -hmm. 
looks to from this configuration of the building of the jail looks to be that. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find. I have to Thank you. No, we're just looking there. at this roof plan, and, and the, the location is on the main street side of the building. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's the reason for my question. Oh, I understand. Yeah. There are, I think, how many units up there in total? Uh, this would be the 10th. Yeah. This would be the 10th unit. None of them are yeah. visible. But, are they all the same size? No, they vary. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible, right? I have been up there. I want to say the parapet is at least four feet, but it's been a while. I don't think any of them will be visible because of the setback. Certainly not from Main Street, because we're pretty far away from Main Street itself. Or any of your neighbors. Um, Andy, and you know you said they had addressed the majority of the neighbors or as far as you're concerned that's still open. Yeah. All right, so we still kind of, do we still want him to confirm that the parapet is at least as tall as the HVAC unit? Is that what we're asking? Yeah, since it's on the on the Main Street side, I'd appreciate that. Pat, you want to, you don't mind. <laughs> Please okay. just confirm it. Um, well, there's already 10 units on the roof. But they're not all the same size. No. No, you just said they're not. Lyle, well, did you have any other so, questions? No, I just, I just want to uh, say to the board is well, this one smaller than the rest of them? When we go to these large generation units, it's yeah. the opposite of uh, the solar energy in green. Like uh, a generator is, is not uh, pollution free, it's not, it's burning hydrocarbon. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to change anything here, I'm just, I'm just reminding people that. That's a backward step. Hmm. Yeah, it would be really nice if you have a nice flat roof, you start putting solar panels. I mean, I, I get it. That's the what they need for their, yeah. for their emergency use, but, you know, just as a general thing, it's a... It's a, it's a very good point. It's a very good point. We, the town, should be thinking about more in their overall design. Yes, yes. That's, that's a, I'm not focusing on this. So I understand in the great scheme of things, right? solar and battery backup is greener, certainly, but exposure, dunnage, and the capacity of a building are make a great determination whether you can do that. Yeah, so. yeah and just in general, whatever you're doing as far as insulation and mm -hmm. you know, energy efficiency in terms of your windows and things like that. Um, so, did we talk about parking at all, so there's no change to the existing parking? Mm. 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 Oh, yes, yeah. so looks like you need to replenish your Okay. $1,500? Oh, let's see. $2,500, I think? It was. No, this is just that we have to vote. You did submit $2,500, right. Okay. right? And the replenishment is $1,500. So we have to, um, it was okay by the supervisor. Uh, they did pay their escrow. So we just need to vote on it. On the oh, right. On the $2,500 and $1,500 replenishment. Okay. You want to make a motion for that? So move. Okay. Second. Have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. <coughs> it's not actually. Oh, that's a, it's a signature. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that, that two things. That okay. Good. Okay. So Any other questions for you? One quick question on yes. the on the rooftop air conditioning unit. Right. We won't get approval for that until the meeting on the twenty seventh. At this point, that when we provide that information. Correct. Hold on. Wait. We have a few things to do before anything gets approved. Well, uh, I'm, I'm trying to ascertain that as we continue to build the interior and produce the tin and the ductwork for that, right? I run the risk if that unit is not approved that I might have to make some changes. And right. I'm okay with waiting for the approval. So right now you're kind of you have two parallel approvals going right. on. So you have this one and the one after. So this one you're doing your generator and your external agent. Mm -hmm. So approval next meeting. 
couple of decisions board has to make before that, and then they'll have our office draft the resolution and we'll okay. come together. Um, but yeah, you're going to have two different paths here and possibly two different, different timings. So a separate approval for the AC unit as opposed to the generator? The AC and the generator will be together on one application. But right. You have your inside approval at your Right, so we've been working toward, we've been phasing that. My my issue is, as I continue that, I accumulate risk. Right. And if I'm gonna have to wait to continue that until after that meeting on the 27th, I kind of need to know because my boss will have a little bit of a, a few questions why about that. Why won't, why won't, can we give it the approval on the 27th? Well, we have to do a couple things. First is, as usual, you have to see your right? So this could be a type two action but we have to confirm that the generator and the tanks, that little area is under 4,000 square feet. If that's under 4,000 square feet, any kind of okay. scale it off and we'll use it is, we just need to confirm that. Gotcha, okay. If that's under 4,000 square feet, we can give it the effect to action. Okay, and there's still the wetlands, right? And then there's, the yeah, yeah, there's still the wetlands. All right, and then the board has to make a Determination is possible in public hearing. Under your code, you don't have to have a public hearing for a site plan, but you have the option under state law. Uh, so you can't confirm the square footage of the area? I can confirm it's under 4,000, right? Yeah. Right now? Mm -hmm. Including the trench, conduit trench? Yeah, so it's like half. So it's well under. Uh, it's well under. So yeah. They don't have to do anything. Else. So we could do that. You could do either. Uh, okay. They also asked for a waiver for the tree survey, oh, yeah. which I mean, the board will consider if it yeah. agrees with that. Uh, and then you also have to have the visit for Mark and Lisa. Right, no, I'm with that. My, my question really centered more about the rooftop air conditioning here, and I wish I could answer that question on the height of that power pad. So, well, you, you could determine that on your own, and then you would have an indication, would you not? Yeah. 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 So you're concerned about the sight line, basically. Exactly. Right? I'm trying to assess my own yeah, that's risk a, reward with the since that's on Since that from your rooftop plan that you showed, mm -hmm. that sight line possibly could be impacted from, from the industry. Understood. That's, I get that. You got it. Okay. It. okay. And if it looks good, I will then you reasonably know continue to pending do. your approval. When you brought it as a two parter, we, we pointed that out. No, I understand that. I understand that. It's just that we're, you know, I, I, as I build on the inside and, and continue with the duct work, yeah. I run some risk. I'm trying to ascertain what that risk is right now. How many so parts? I'm trying to pressure you. Is it like a resonator type unit, like with heating and air conditioning? Yeah. Okay, and so uh, you must have a cut sheet of that. And, uh, yeah. So you know, you know the height of that and the yeah. curves and everything. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's just the curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's fine. I, I guess okay. what I would say to the rest of the board is, it's, it's pretty long distance off the street, and uh, even if it was, yeah. even if it was a foot taller, I doubt if you would ever see it from the 299. I mean, that's that, that's just my my sense of it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not positive, but uh, and, and resident units are typically I don't know, eye level, you know, maybe slightly higher. Mm -hmm. you know? By the time you get them mounted on a curb or something. I'm not saying it's a resonator, but whatever brand. Right, there'll be some footage, and so we'll make that determination. But I've been up there, and it's tall, but I can't tell you exactly. I wish it was on the plan. That's fine. I'll, you understand the intent. I, I just, yeah. So my question is, if we today... I don't okay, know what Amy, that is. Amy, <laughs> <you're doing laughs> Amy, you're making noise. So if we type, we could type this tonight? Yes. Okay, so we can type it tonight. We can waive the tree survey tonight. You can decide on the public hearing as well. And we can decide on the public hearing tonight. And that way, the only thing that's left is the wetlands, right? And we're okay with the... So, I mean, it shows... Site? If you think we'll so, that. Right. you can okay. confirm that to us. Okay, so why don't we do that? So just so you know, I mean, it, it shows. I mean, it shows like there's a little space bit right here, which you know, this is the parking lot, right? How many parking spaces do you have? 130. 130. You know, you're supposed to have electric vehicle charging stations for every 20 spots. Who's doing? It's in our code. 
Oh, their parking lot was put in before that was. But like they're before meeting. us with the site plan, you know, application. This is how we make progress with things like this. Hmm. How many? So one for every twenty. You should have bike racks too. I do that. You do? I have a lot of employees who use them. I don't know that our patient population has electric cars or our staff. We, I'd be happy to put them in, but they'd be underutilized in the tight parking situation. So what our code says mm -hmm. is that the planning board has the ability to weigh that requirement, but not to be required conduits to support it in the future. So you would okay. still generate most of the cost. You don't know that your patient population will be, you know, going towards that in the future. Okay, so that's a question, everybody. We have to, um, you're saying that he doesn't have to put in the charging stations, but he has to put in the, the technology. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, if you read the code, it says you have to run the conduit and have it, have, you know, in spots where you could then right, install the charging stations needed. in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how many would be required? One mm -hmm. for every 20 spaces. Mm -hmm. six, 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 yeah. So is it any site plan that mm -hmm. proposes more than 20 parking spaces? Uh, electrical charging stations. So I guess you could read that differently. Are they proposing any parking? No. Their parking already exists, but they're before us with a site plan application, therefore our codes apply to their application. Oh, excuse me, you're the attorney, you can say that. <laughs> well, I have to look at it a little more, but it's, I have to see if they're changing anything and that would affect the interpretation. Okay, um, okay so why don't, not. Okay, why don't we do that? Why don't we do the other things we can do? You're not getting approval time anyway. We'll look that. into that, and then we'll let you know before the next meeting. How's that? Awesome. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion on the type? On the type? Type two. So move. I don't know. I don't think so. Do we don't have to wait for the webman's inspector to go through to type it, do we? No, no that wouldn't have an effect. You could just yeah. hit the threshold issue. Yeah. But you don't have to Okay. Is that Saturday you have your hand up? No. No, I was just trying to see what <coughs> Okay. So, do you have any questions, Matt? Okay. No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone want to make a motion to waive the tree survey? So move. Second. Second. Any discussion? I have a quick discussion. Okay. So, it just looks like where the generator is going to go. Uh, you're running up. You're, are you going on the other side of your parking lot? That's what I'm trying to figure out. The back side of the parking lot. Like the back side. Yeah. Is, there, is that all forested area back there? It's a now stone, open, uh, it's a stone a retention. water base retention. Right next. So, there's no, right. Retention so that's what's there now. There's no yeah, there's no trees there. No okay. trees. That's all. The disturbed question. area does not have any trees in the parking lot. Okay. 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 Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 So we have a motion to waive the public hearing. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So you have those three things. Um, what are the other things? I'm going to find out about the electrical. Um, I just let you know about the parking, and I will get the site plan issue set over there. Okay. Well, there's also a bit that you go ahead. Uh, just ask, look, in the, in the instance that he's not absolutely required, would you be willing to put any in in that area where you're going to be digging up for, you're running a conduit across anyway, right? Or is it possible to, to get something put in so that, your population could change. Your your employees could right, change. It's mostly a Medicare, and we don't turn anybody away, right? So that you know not, what? 
I'm on Medicare and I have all that. Oh, I understand. I'm, I'm not trying to be <laughs> difficult about it, but my, my boss is going to tell me who drives a Tesla, right? It's not only so, a Tesla. Tesla. Oh, I understand. <laughs> I understand. There are many but Tesla. I'm, 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 if there's oh, anyone coming, there are two vehicles and there one are. coming. But we'd be willing to certainly put in some. I think probably at the front of the building more than the rear. That's mostly staff parking, right? So, so why don't you come with some ideas? We'll still yeah. get the information sure. to you. Sure. I don't object um, to that, and that would be a separate piece of this. This, this is not part of the funding we receive to do that, so we have to do it on our own. Um, so, we'll, we'll be happy to undertake that. I certainly don't object to that. Um, okay. I mean, I'm, 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 not I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying to. When you when you say these things, I hear. What what am I going to hear when I go back? Right. So I'm trying to ask the So we're going to find that if you're required. Mm -hmm. But even if you're not required, we're hoping that you're going to. Some, do sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Anything else? Awesome. I just do. Andy, was there no elevations to determine the height of the parapet wall, or just the height, the total height? It doesn't seem to be yeah. in the set that I have. So. All right. I just want. Okay. I wish. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe your architect. Yeah. I have to take measure on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Should be okay. there tomorrow. Any, any awesome. other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> oh, okay, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you sign that, right? Okay. We have to Can give you, you a piece of paper. Hang on. Thank you. You, you just have to sign for it. Yeah. Just letting you know what, what's out, what's outstanding. Yeah, okay. You sign for it. Right here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. interrupt for just a moment because this is the first time some of people here have seen the seeker. So 
This is filled out. We have the right to speak up and say, no, no, I don't, I don't agree with that, and then have a discussion. This would be just to that for our convenience. Okay. Yes, please interrupt if you have a okay. question. I want to talk about it further. So six would say yes because it's you know storage next to an existing storage facility. Uh, is the site is the site of the proposed action located in a critical environmental area? No, the town does not have any CEAs right now. The proposed action results in substantial increase in traffic above levels. No, good storage generates pretty low traffic. Public transportation services available near the site, yes. Relatively close. Are any pedestrian accommodations or bicycle routes available at or near the site? I would say yes, and with more on the way. Mm -hmm. Suppose action meter exceeds state energy code requirements. Yes, it has to meet state energy code requirements. And they're also proposing uh, solar panels. Um, Proposed action connect to existing private public water supply. That's kind of a sort of. They're not actually using it for water. It's only for the sprinkler system. So I would say yes is the right answer. Wait, didn't the, didn't the village agree to extend the fields? Yeah, to let them connect. The proposed action connect to existing wastewater facilities. It doesn't have any bathrooms or wastewater facilities. Really? No. 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 no, right? No bathrooms. No bathrooms. No. Does the project site contain uh, or is it contiguous to an archaeological or national uh, state historic places? Um, no, that's something that comes up automatically when you do this. Yeah, if it did. Um, is any portion of it? Is sensitive archaeologically, that would also come up automatically. No. Is any of the post site um, joining any wetlands or water bodies? That's yes, because of the wetland on the site and also because of the property next door at wetlands. Would they propose, uh, would propose that can physically alter or encroach into any existing wetland? No, it's actually encroaching partially into the buffer, but that uh, says wetland, so that is no. Number 14, typical habitats in the area, forest and wetland. Uh, does the proposed action contain any species um, listed as threatened or endangered? That's another one that would come up automatically and there's nothing on this site. Is a 100 year floodplain? No. Will the proposed action create stormwater discharges? Yes. Will it flow onto adjacent properties? No, because they're proposing the um, fire retention pond next to the building. And will it discharge into established conveyance systems? Yes, which would be really the wetland and the stream that flows out of that. Um, proposed action include construction or other activities that result in a pound of water. No, there's no dams. I think you said it was you said yes. Uh, I think they really, that question is really geared towards large impoundments of like um, you know a large pond or a large. Well, this is going to have like a I don't even know if there's going to be an embankment on it. I think it's really just a depression in the ground. Are you talking about number eighteen? Yes. Yeah, I, but we put down, yeah, so we fill out section one. We put oh, down. It's, it's filled out, yeah. So because yeah. it's almost a 2,500 square foot. Right. Okay. I mean, I think I could go either way. I would typically put no on that, but that's, I don't think it's. That's okay. He just yeah. described it. So. Yeah. Has yeah. <coughs> the site of the proposed action or adjoining property been the location of active solid waste management facility? No. As a proposed site, <coughs> is the site of proposed action or adjoining property the subject of remediation or, or, or hazardous waste? That comes up because oh, of the, the dry cleaner. Right. So it does a search within, I guess, 2,000 feet. So it'll, that triggered gas because of the dry cleaner, which happened right in 1967 and All right. Okay, now we get to you. 
Now, what's that? Now your part. Right. Um, okay, so this is the part that the planning board fills out and decides which part to <coughs> choose. The proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulation. No, the town does have zoning regulations. It is permitted use in the zone. It meets, um, there's no variances required, so it essentially meets code. So that's a no impact. Your proposed action result in change in the use or intensity of use of land. I would say that this would be small impact since it's increasing the intensity but not dramatically. Number three, will the pros actually impair the character or quality of the existing community? Um, I think this is kind of a subje somewhat subjective, this question. I would say no or small since it's a, per it's a permitted use, it's next to an existing storage site. So I would say small impact. So I think we would agree with you on that. It's going to have a visual impact that's not there now because the other storage is one story and it's behind a lot of trees, mm -hmm. but it's still going to be, um, even if you said moderate, it's like, either way, it's, it, you know, you're going to see it, it's going to be there. Yeah, and I think number eight gets more into the aesthetic and yeah. that issue of visual. Uh, proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristic, characteristics of the CEA. No, there's no CEA in the town. Yeah. Will the proposed action result in an average change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? This is a no um, or small. It's um, storage storage facilities have really low traffic lines. People mm -hmm. don't want to go to them. It is going to be increasing the amount of storage, so therefore the users. I mean, so there will be some impact, but it's not going to be like putting in commercial retail or something. Right. Much, much less than something like a retail or restaurant. Mm -hmm. So that could be either no or small. Uh, the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy, and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities. I would say no, because uh, it meets it needs to meet the state energy code, and also they're proposing solar and going to be close to net zero, right, mm -hmm. or something. I'm hoping to push back into the grid, but yeah. We probably will sometimes, and uh, yeah. not today, <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, will proposed action impact existing public-private war supplies? No, it's not going to use any water, actually, unless there's a fire. Uh, and there's no bathrooms with no wastewater. So if there is a fire, how many gallons is it set up to dump? What's the flow? I mean, what would be the usage? It, it would be an acute, small, you know, like immediate usage, but what would it be? Like, would everybody like... Whatever it takes to put out the fire. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Until so it's out? Until the fire's out. That's what the fire suppression system so it goes is by for heat? to determine to put the fire out. It goes by heat? I don't know what it does. Where they work. What are you looking for? Like volume? Yeah. yeah. Like, will the neighbors, like, their water pressure will drop because he's on fire? I don't think that much be that much different than flushing hydrants. You know, they flush those for like 20 minutes sometimes. You know, it's not going to impact. It's in the hallways, right? It's not in the individual units, right? It's in the, where is it? The um, the fire suppression there's a there's an internal and New York State code for how you know there's a certain distance between heads uh -huh. and everything like that. Um, but so the units are locked. They're not. It's not inside each unit. Right? I I don't believe so. I mean there is there's there's um, spaces above the unit. Okay. There are these cages that allow the sprinkler heads to spread out uh -huh. to go all over. Um, you know that's something that gets finalized in the um, building code aspects, the interior layout, and, and uh, it's all based upon New York State fire safety code. So, so are you going to have a fire alarm system in the building? Yeah, we have to. Okay, so then will the sprinkler system be monitored with the flow states and Yes, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, um, 
we definitely have, it's going to have a, a fire system, a commercial, it has to, you know, end with a sprinkler system integrated into that. And, you know, all of our systems are going to be monitored. We're going to have a security system as well. And so it'll be integrated into some sort of smart, um, you know, data, data collection analysis. So if someone was in a unit, a fire happened somewhere else in the building, put some alarm to go off to tell them to Yes, yeah, 100%. And that's going to tie into like the elevator and, you know, it's all, you know, together, it's tied together. I'm sorry. Are you going to have a water meter? Okay. Typically the fire lines don't have a water meter. But if you come in and you test every three months or six months or whatever, you're flowing a lot of water, is how do you get the village position on that? Well, I think the only way, let's say we're legally capping off it, um, I don't know, fire lines, you typically aren't monitored because if they're, you know, if the sprinkler goes off, it's like, it's a disaster basically. Yeah. The place is destroyed. I mean, it's not, so it's not something that's meter. Um, or charge to the customer. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Because it would be a huge meter. A lot of times it's six inch lines. Yeah, so. nah, they're not a meter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So just wondering, I mean, yeah, just wondering what the impact would be if it ever happened. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. Number eight. Um, Proposed action and imperative character or quality of important historic archaeological architectural or aesthetic resources. So no historic resources came up for that area or archaeological. Architectural, I think um, that was certainly discussed with this board and that's something that the applicant has put effort towards to try to mitigate that impact. Uh, so I would say that could be a small impact um, in architecture. And then aesthetic as well, he's, I think they made efforts to mitigate that little landscaping and different building types. So I would say small. So actually, because they're doing mitigation, so that impact, it was a potential for a larger impact, but the mitigation is already, so instead of us saying go now and fit, he's already like built it in. So right, so if he, if he proposed a building that, that was much different in the area and the board really thought it was going to look terrible, and, they, and he said, that's it. Uh, will the proposed action result in an adverse change in natural resources, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, and fauna? Uh, they are impacting a small amount of wetland buffer. I think they're mitigating that with the spire retention pond and all the plantings and the treating storm water and filtering it. Um, and I did ask Mark Carabato if he thought there was any impacts as far as, you know, plants and animals, and he didn't think there was much of a habitat there. That would be, he thought it would be probably a more better habitat for the pond and all the planting than what's there now. Um, so I would say that's maybe small because of the wetland buffer impact. Uh, will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for eroding and flooding or drainage? problems. I'd say that possibly small, but they're they're closing a the pond, they have an erosion control plan, they're mitigating the runoff. So I'd say that's either no or small impact. And then finally will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? No. So I just to go back to number three, which um, you were uh, Challenging? Well, no, I was just saying that, um, so so the visibility of it, but I think, so there's, so part two is whether there's an impact or not, and part three is whether it's significant. And so this is where the mitigation has come in, where maybe something's happening, but is it significant? Well, they've tried to do landscaping and, you know, the trees, what they're going to, they're going to plant to shield and things like that. So the significance may not be, um, there may not be significant findings, even though there may be impacts. 
because of the actions that we're already proposing. Are you suggesting this is a moderate to large impact and we should change it? Well, let's go ahead and make it a moderate because it's definitely going to be a three-story building that everybody can see where there isn't one now. Are you okay with that? Changing well, number I, three um, to moderate to large. I mean, they're suggesting you go no. moderate to large. Hi, Amy. You're saying? No, it's not large. It's, I don't no, say it was large. large. No. It's just not. I'm sorry. So the, it's moderate to large is the category, or zero or small. Um, okay. Okay. Even if it's moderate, even if it's large, it doesn't necessarily mean it's significant. Okay, let's just take a poll. Why? But is there an impact? Um, number three to small. Okay. Small to moderate, I would. That's not helpful. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> small. Large. I would then say small. So, okay. so I guess we should all go back and remember how <coughs> impacts are determined. It has to do with scale, but it also has to do with duration. Is it for a short term or is it for a long term? Is it, you know, there's other things involved besides yeah. the physical size of it. The DC now, it used to be kind of, you just, very subjective, you say no, it's smaller. Now the DC has a pretty detailed book and examples on what would be a small impact on moderate to large, and I actually have this here just to oh. give us kind of examples of what would be Good. moderate to large. Okay. 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 Uh, let's see. For this section, uh, adopting adoption of a zoning change that adds new permitted commercial uses on existing 15 acres located in an urban area, has water and sewer that can handle it. Uh, there's access to public transportation. The district has already built out, and the zone change is allowing additional uses of existing buildings. That would be considered uh, no to small impact. Scenario two, construction of a 55,000 square foot big box grocery store. It's located at the edge of, of the village on a state highway. It's adjacent to a locally designated historic district that's proposed on a former agricultural field. There's no public water, sewer, infrastructures. Um, this is large, moderate to large. Uh, let's see. Construction of a water tower. Place near houses. Uh, no other tall structures in the area. It's moderate to large. So those weren't overly helpful. Sometimes they're more helpful than that. Okay, so is that? Is that well, I mean, it, it's hard. I feel like it, it you know, it might be a moderate to the existing, you know, character of the existing community, but I, I was hoping that what Andy was going to share would be a little more helpful with that. So and small. Small. Okay. Okay, let's small. I don't think it's small. Okay. Um, it's small. Okay. So, so since you didn't check any moderate to larges, you don't have to be hard to read. Well, so first, if everybody's okay with this, I would just ask for a motion to accept it as granted. Okay. I have a motion to accept the objective. So moved. Okay. I have a second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I just want to revisit the small to moderate because it is tricky. It's a big, as Amanda said, it's a very large building and it's a three-story building where there are no other three-story buildings. And it's very, very large. Um, and that site's almost been hidden so far, you know, up to now. And this is going to make it much more prominent. So I just think maybe take a second turn, just another, another thing, just to, just to take another second for another thing. 
the majority of us already said it's it's about number three. Yeah. yeah. But by the definition that we said we said small. Okay, so right now it's I I just want to mention that um, he's utterly and completely within code. Okay. So when you're judging impacts, I think it's important to, to understand not just the surrounding area, but he's not asking for any variances. He's not going beyond height restrictions. He's doing his best he can to like cover what he's trying to do. He's been very nice about changing the architecture, changing the building. So when you're thinking about whether to make this an impact, I think it's important to recognize that what he's done so far, how far he's come, and also the fact that he's completely within code. He's not asking for you know a four-story building. Okay. Then just just pointing that out. I just want to say. Um, and I think it's a small impact, but I just want to say that even if it was a moderate to large impact, what Amanda said was that it doesn't mean that it will reach right, it doesn't trigger significance. Any. significance. Yeah, it doesn't trigger it. So, um, all right, let's just do it one more time. And it's, and it's a little subjective. Okay. Yeah. So one more time, just to satisfy everyone here. Lyle? I think it's a small impact. Okay. I'll say small. Oh. I'll say small. I'm still saying moderate. Okay. Small. Okay. I'm on the fence. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. And Amy? Yes. Okay. So we're going small. Okay. So there we are. There, there we were. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. So you want to, um, we need to vote on that motion? Accept this? So mm -hmm. I moved it. No, you moved it. 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 You moved You have, so the part three would be where you explain anything that would be, you know, a large impact. Which we don't have. Right. So that would just be your discrimination statement. So now if you don't have anything and you feel it's a negative declaration, you just go ahead and issue that for Right. Okay. Motion for negative declaration. Should I make a comment? Yes. Uh, Andy, do you have any other concerns? No. Uh, Water, okay. anything, no, wetlands? Any of these thresholds for this project or would go for okay. the moderate. Okay. We already received the ENCB's comments on this. Yeah. They were satisfied with it. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we're all cool. That's good. Okay. Okay. Motion for negative declaration. Second. Oh. So moved. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You need to set a public hearing for the wetlands and for the subdivision. So we can do that for next time. Can we do that for next time? No, maybe not. They're cutting it really close. Okay. All right. Because the code says they have to have five calendar days. Okay. So maybe. Ten calendar days. So February 10th. February 10th. February 10th. Oh, 27th. Right. Gotcha. February 10th. Okay. So you want to go to the February 10th. I'm okay with February 10th. You said okay. So what other issues can we talk about? I think we're, I mean, we, they went through three rounds of my comments already, and um, so. So, they, I, yeah. the only thing I can remember, I know, is that we did not talk, we talked about putting off the sidewalk. That's wow. one of the issues still before us. Um, and since the Empire State Trail, uh, we'll be coming down Henry Du Bois in some form. Um, mm -hmm. What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Keep dropping it. <laughs> Amy, just fall in place. You good, Amy? I'm good. Okay. Um, that perhaps you can talk to the town and come to some kind of agreement with them. As I'm not sure what they're going to be doing there. Right. And, and it's going to be happening very soon. So I, I think the thought on the part of the town is that perhaps if you're in agreement, you and the town would enter into some type of developer's agreement where 
rather than you go ahead and build sidewalks, you and the town come to some type of agreement on terms where you would provide the town with you know X amount of dollars, and in turn the town would take that and make some type of pedestrian improvements over there, or you do the sidewalk and the board would take consideration for that and waive the sidewalk part. So who would? That's yeah. not this board. That's that's the that would be the town board, and you would talk to the supervisor. Would be my suggestion. Okay. Um, could there be a? I mean, would that be able to? I, I question. I worry about the timing of everything. Um, is there something we could make? Potentially, my application condition. You know, condition approval condition upon finding that. Because when we have that question and I, you know, bring that up to the town board, they may want to revisit it. It could be, you know, multiple weeks, you know, and I would hate to hold up my application for, you know, I mean, maybe, um, you know, they have to get the New York State involved and, you know, like engineering reviews and how all that would happen. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't have all engineering reviews in the state. Or anything. It would just be, you know, like a simple agreement between you and the town. Yes. If, if it's not something you're interested in, that's entirely your decision. No they don't be stuck making sidewalks that they could do. Well, no, I mean, that doesn't make sense. Yes. I mean, and it's not in a great area. You guys know, it's, there's a steep slope, and it's, there's tons of wetlands in the area, and why build something that no one's going to use? So my understanding is that they don't have the formalized plan. Right. The original plan for that is a sidewalk all the way down Henry Du Bois. This is my understanding. I don't know that they're going to go in that direction, mm -hmm. but I think it would be a good idea for you to talk to the supervisor. I don't think they'll hold you up. Okay. I, I, I mean, it's, it's my, my understanding, understanding that they are they haven't finalized, right? But we know that they've gotten grants for it. We mm -hmm. know that it's in the works. They just haven't finalized, you know, exactly what's going to be. So we can't say you have to build a sidewalk that looks like this. Because right. we don't know what the rest of it's going to look like, and you don't want it to look piecemeal, right? All the right. way down right. HW. You want it to look. Well, we know. want it to make sense. Yeah. Right. It's exactly. a big advantage for you, though, these snow mm -hmm. You're forever free if it's a rail trail or if it's a bicycle <laughs> trail path. Whereas yeah. if you have to put a sidewalk in, yeah, you've got to do that every time it snows, yeah. Um, Andy, I remember in the last meeting you mentioned that you saw plans that indicated that it was like preliminary, but that it might be on two on the same side, or there were things. Did you, has there been any updates since then? So I have talked to them. Oh, okay. And, um, Mr. Drill is sitting there. You might know. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like, I, I, oops. I, I talked to him, and okay. they, they're still in the works. Okay. So the, they did have original preliminary plans, mm -hmm. but they have, Specialists that are going to produce a plan that may look much different than the okay. original plan. Okay. So uh, I don't think any. I don't think you're going to have to wait for a plan okay. to do this. Right. Okay. It would just be. A you know, he could get approval, and then that would be contingent on him fulfilling okay, his obligation to the plan <laughs> at the later date when the plan is ready. But we can't waive the. Sidewalk contingent on like it has. So I think I think he either he could either put the sidewalk in, or his agreement would be contingent on the tech the, on him paying a portion to the town if it wouldn't exceed the price of the sidewalk. Well, I, so I, I think you need to talk to the town. I will. I will. I think that's the best way to do it. If, if we We're not I think it'll actually speed you we up. We can't. Yeah. We can't make you do that. Right. We well, can't no, make no, you I'll, put in a sidewalk, right. but we can't make you do that. So I guess at the next meeting, though, which is the next time I'm going to be able to be in front of everyone here, mm -hmm. it will be the public hearing. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, potentially, if everything could be resolved, mm -hmm. decisions could be made. Part of that, if I don't have a definitive, legally signed contract at that point, I guess my question is, is it could be something that, I mean, is there going to be an you know, more directions that, more options that you guys can give to me at that point. I can tell you right now. Yeah. I can tell you right now. But you know, they're having a town board meeting on the 16th this week. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I can get on the agenda. I don't know the city advisor. Yeah. I'm just needing to go speak to the Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay. I have a question. Thank you.
Is that, are we just, I'm just trying to understand. I remember this conversation, but I don't remember entirely. Is he required by code to put a sidewalk? Yes. 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 Can the board waive that requirement yes, completely? Yes. We yes. can. Yes. We could just say to him now, we waive that. Yes. But we know that there's a possibility. I, I just want to know because be what, is, what is the frontage on this property on that street? Well, we're talking about 50, just approximately, Andy, not exact. 50 feet, 200 feet? It's, it's the, yeah, no, it's more. Um, it's the developed area, the new area is 60 feet, but there's a large portion that's all wetlands, you know, that we don't use. It probably goes another 250 feet. Um, it's just that whole strip of wetlands and, and trees between my property and the residential area. Right. That we own. Feet. Yeah. And that's including the area that he's not touching. Yes. Right. His full front. So, so if we, if so the requirement. I'm sorry, there's another 60 here. So yeah, yeah, the 60 is the new. 320. Yeah. So the requirement is that he puts it in the entire length, not right. just the area that he's touching. I don't know that it's that specific. I think it's pretty, it just says side, sidewalks. I'm yeah. just asking. I, I, I honestly, I don't, I don't recall. If the code isn't clear on that, that would be something we have to get interpretation facing on. Okay. I would like to get that. I'd like to know that. Yeah, maybe okay. this is a bunch of other things. Drainage, roads, sidewalks, right. lighting. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Is there anything else for us? Um, okay, thank you very much. Come back to them at another time? No, no, at the end of the agenda. Uh, okay. Because so there are people who are here. Yeah, they're not here. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we can let them go. Yeah. All right. Dennis? Yes. Doyle. So, 
thank the board for your time. Um, and we're back to talk about the uh, the Veterans Cemetery. I'm going to let my team introduce myself, introduce themselves, and we'll sort of go, give you a rundown in terms of where we are um, and uh, what we plan to do in the future. So, Mark Casapoli, I'm the Director of Veterans Services. Jason Pittengauer from Pittengauer and Doge Engineers. We're the uh, consultant on the project. We're one of the consultants on the project. So just refresh the board's memory. Um, the county is proposing a veteran cemetery to be located on Plains Road. Uh, it's in a, an existing field that's down there from um, the new Paul's Rural Cemetery. Uh, it's about eight and a half acres, about four of that acreage, about 4.5 of that acres would be used essentially for the veteran cemetery facilities. Um, we have gone through a lead agency designation with respect to the county. The county has determined that uh, it had requested from the community to be lead agency. Um, we had that re request back. No one responded in, in, the, uh, in the adverse with respect to that, so the county did assume lead agency role. We've been working on our secret documents right now relative to, to uh, the project. Um, we're also in the process of working with the New Paltz Rural Cemetery on an easement. Uh, the county would take an easement over that property for uh, cemetery purposes. There is currently some burials on the property for indigent burials in the back of the site. Um, we would not use that area. Um, we have, I think, a, an agreement in principle relative to that easement. We have not effectuated that easement, mainly because we have to make the necessary uh, state environmental quality review findings before we issue before we go through that approval. Uh, when we last met with the board, just understand this property, we have the somewhat of a distinction of having a property that's actually split by the town and village lines. Uh, so a portion of this property is actually in the village and the other portion of the property is in the town. Um, so we're being in front of both, of both boards. Um, when we last met, we indicated that what we'd like to try to do with you is agree that the county can meet what they call the Monroe test, which is a balance of public interest test. We're not seeking approval from the local planning boards, but rather an indication that we've met that balance of public interest test and it is in the public interest and we're going through the necessary processes. So the community is comfortable that the county is being able to meet the zoning statutes where it can and when it can't have good reasons why it, why it can't. Uh, where we are in the secret process right now, we've completed all our uh, uh, preliminary designs. We're at what uh, stage of drawings now? Uh, we, we've completed everything preliminary. We're, we're preparing the final architectural, landscape, site plan design, um, and the concept, the uh, master plan, or the, the plan for the cemetery has been accepted by the county. So where that leaves us is we're, we're currently working on the one area that we have the greatest concern about is relative to uh, the State Historic Preservation Office. Uh, so we're currently completing that effort uh, right now, and we anticipate that we'll get that back hopefully before um, a March um, and we'll be able to essentially make go through a process at the county level to make a determination and findings as it relates to the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Um, other than that, we do believe we've done some drone flights out there to take a look at what the visibility is, particularly with respect to the ridge itself. Uh, we've identified the trees that have to essentially be removed at the front of the site so that we can gain access to the site. Uh, there are approximately five trees at the front of the site that we'll be uh, seeking to remove. Uh, and when we re remove those, be aware of the fact that, as you can see behind us, what we're going to do is create an lead through here. So we're going to replant uh, those trees uh, inside the facility. We'll, we'll plant uh, eight additional trees. We're working on what those would, would consist of right now, plus a row of uh, ornamental shrubs down the middle to create a boulevard effect moving into that, moving into that facility. Um, what we hope we'd like to be able to do is get the, get the board uh, to at least uh, agree in principle that we have a, uh, a, a basis for a balance of public interest determination by the board that the county has met its responsibilities for that. Uh, we have not scheduled a public meeting and the only reason we haven't scheduled a public meeting in, in New Paltz is the, awaiting the results of the State Historic Preservation work that's ongoing right now. Jason, you want to finish up with where we are on site plan work and explain the site plan itself, and I'll hold it for you. Sure. No, I mean, no, it's we, right. have we have it. You got it? Okay. Yeah, there isn't much that has changed since the last time. Uh, we've done some work to reduce any disturbed areas. Uh, we've gone ahead and identified all the burial sections, including the future areas that we've reserved towards the back. Uh, we've worked with the New Paltz uh, Rural Cemetery uh, as far as the burial scheme goes, and what we're doing is burying 
uh, from the inside out, let's say, uh, so the inner area of that um, ring road that we've produced in case for some reason uh, we don't reach the maximum quantity that, that the county has reserved, all those areas could revert back to the new Maltzville Cemetery. They'll still remain burials, and that was always the intention for this this whole portion of land. They just may not be veterans, in, but we, we anticipate that they will. Um, we have uh, confirmed our design as far as where is everything going with the committal shelter and the column barrier towards the rear. Um, and we're just completing those final things that Dennis mentioned now as far as the archaeological uh, work and the final site plans, landscape plans will be produced, um, and architectural plans for the committal shelter as well. What kind of trees are you taking down? It's the tr if you look at the row of trees in front of that as you go down Plains Road, it's those trees right in the front there. Are very, there are five large trees in the front that we're going to be removing. Uh, out of those five, two of them are in very poor position. Uh, in condition. They're not locusts, they're just pine trees. Yeah, that pine trees. Yeah. Like, um, you know, basically property markers along the front there. Yeah. When was the last time you were by there? The last time I was by there? Yeah. Uh, um, I, last Saturday. Okay, because I was there in these, well, I was just driving down the mm -hmm. and I saw a bunch of pine trees being taken down. So not from our, not okay, us. I couldn't tell there where. were some trees that were damaged because I was there last week too and I talked to the cemetery association. There were some trees that were damaged and they had some tree work done on the property. Okay. And there probably will be more that were taken down by then because there are more pine trees that are damaged and that's why, that, as Dennis mentioned, some of these, as those trees get really old and big, they end up splitting. Mm -hmm. Two of the five that we're looking at should probably be taken down. Anyway. Um, okay, but you're not taking any of the locusts? No. And we're not laying down any other plants or trees anywhere else on site. It's only to create this entrance area. And then the area that we're using for the cemetery is disturbed agricultural land that's been tilled for a very long time. Okay. Any other questions? Lyle? No? Is there any opportunity to to think, have the board think about a resolution or a vote that basically says the county could meet its requirements under the balance of public interest tests uh, so that we wouldn't have to, we would basically be able to move forward without coming back for that determination. So as far, I know you're before the village and the town. Yep. As far as the town goes, um, as, as far as I'm aware at this point, a decision hasn't been made yet if the planning board is gonna do this or if the town board is gonna do this. Um, so we're going to have to follow up and try to figure out who's going to take lead on this and make that decision and issue the resolution. Um, so as far as doing it tonight, I'm going to say no, but we can get that conversation moving and okay. try to so see who's going to we're, we're, we're kind of asking is that, and we've done this uh, plenty of times with your guys' office, is that if, if it's determined that it's done at either whatever board it is, that you just share the resolution with us, we review it, and then um, the, the board be able to take action without us reappearing, I guess, is what we're asking. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. If we're both in agreement, both parties are in agreement with the resolution that we can resolve with that. Without agreeing. Oh, yeah, I think it was fine. Okay. okay. Of course, we're only speaking for the planning board. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yes. So there's no, I see there's a floodplain here marked up, but there's no wetlands in here? No, because actually beyond the floodplain, it gets very steep and it drops off, and that's I don't know that there is any wetlands, but if there were, they would be down there. They're not in the area we're proposing to do any work okay. in. Yeah. yeah. We're up on the, the plateau. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. 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 Thank well, thank you. Thank you so thank you. much. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
is here to answer any questions that we might have on his wetlands report. Right. Okay. So just to, can I just kind of frame it a little sure. bit? Sure. Okay. So the wetlands and water course protection part of the code, which is section 139, has 26 subparts to it, and it's 50 pages long. And I think probably Lyle is very familiar with it because she helped draft it way back when. But I think probably the most of us, the rest of us are familiar with parts of it, but maybe not all aspects of it. And I would think possibly our applicants also have that same sort of, um, you know, it's very, it's a lot of stuff in it. There's a lot of parts, and when I start reading it, I get kind of lost in all the little bits of it too. So, um, but one part that, that is in there is that the planning board submits an annual report to the town board no later than the 10th of December every year, but okay. Um, and we're supposed to comment on this section of our code on the administration, efficacy, and enforcement. And it's not the enforcement of the requirements that the code enforcement does, but of the how the section of the code is, is working and being done by all of us. So in other words, enforcement of the time requirements, enforcement of the fact that Mark goes out and does his reviews, things like that, not did someone violate something that the code enforcement is supposed to do. So I think that's where we got a little confused about this at one point. Um, and this is to assist the town board in um, monitoring what's going on with this code and evaluating the extent to which the intent and purpose of the code is being served by all, all of us that are trying to use it. So the planning board, the NCB, the wetlands inspector, and applicants. So I think, so Mark's report is very useful because it summarizes all of the activities that he's done, both on behalf of the planning board by referrals, but also on behalf of code enforcement when he's asked to go out and review possible violations and he says whether he's found them or not. So that's a really important part of it. It's not the report we're supposed to send to the town board, it's an attachment to that report where we talk about how, how well is this code being enforced? Are we all familiar enough with it um, to use it properly? And do we think it's transparent to applicants the way it's done? And so Mark actually had a suggestion for that. He's got this little kind of like, um, that little pathway you go where you know the yes, no, doing these things. He had made this attachment to his report. Um, something like that maybe would be useful to have somewhere on a town website where people could go find it, as well as finding the maps. Um, do, do we feel like responses from the wetlands inspector and the ENCB are being done appropriately to give us enough information to make decisions? Um, same thing kind of with efficacy. What is efficacy? Well, again, um, are we able to provide productive input to the applicants? Um, are we able to meet the intents and purposes of the code um, appropriately and then enforcement is, yeah, do we have any issues with timelines or response times or documents that we need to produce? I don't think we have. So, you know, we're not being asked to do, we're not being asked to talk about what the findings were, that's what Mark's got, but we're supposed to talk about how's the code working as far as what we can tell. And that's kind of what our report is supposed to say. So one of the things that's supposed to happen is Mark is supposed to do an annual update to the maps because he's going out and looking at the wetlands in detail. And maybe there's some that have never been on the maps before, or maybe their boundaries have changed or whatever. But what he's realized is that the map for the town is of a scale that doesn't, doesn't lend itself to the, the granularity that he's finding on these things. So the code says you're supposed to be keeping the, the modified maps, whatever, the updated maps. But that's, that's great, except that then who knows about it? You know, like he notifies individual property owners if yes, you have wetlands or your boundaries shifted or it's not what you thought it was or whatever. But then how does, how do we, how does anyone else find that information? And so that's something, perhaps the GIS component could be, I don't know, is there, a way, is there a way to put something else out there that people can find it besides just Mark knowing it and having it in his files? Well, there's a few things because when I'm asked by a private landowner for sort of the one free visit, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I may say to them, these are wetlands over here. Mm -hmm. The boundary is approximately here. And if you could stay 
without outside of 100 feet, then you don't have to worry about a permit at all. Right. I'm not, in, in, in some cases, I'm not delineating natural no, boundary. Shouldn't. I'm just pointing it out approximately. Yeah. It's, it's usually once a project's actually going forward where they're inside of the buffer, they delineate a boundary. Right. Uh, and then that becomes part of the process as we go through, like we just were with New Palm Storage. So there I delineated a boundary. Right. Uh, and. So now that's part of the record. On his um, on his maps. Right. But right. is it like if so then if twenty years from now someone else comes and wants to buy that property and do something that 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 would still be that would be something that would be readily available to them because it's somewhere in the files on that piece of property? That that I don't know. Yes, yeah, so that's my So there's another piece of it in that when this is the map. And this was yeah, this That's was, it. This was, and, and this is the scale it was intended yeah. to be used at. So this is intended to be guidance. You know, you could have a, a property that's not shown in a wetland down here, but it may actually be in a wetland, or vice versa. Because these are, these layers are created from, you know, uh, aerially mapped wetlands, not from people on the ground actually. Right. Doing so they're, they're all approximate. It's soil mapping. So this is meant as guidance, and any time anybody's proposing something, we go look at the site and figure out where the actual boundary is. Right. Um, if I were to make, if I were to add the actual wetland delineations that I've done over the past year to this, and recreate the map at this scale, you wouldn't be able to see, see the changes because they're a little, you know, one parcel. You could barely see the parcels on here. Right. So, right. Um, is that's, there any way to get that now? to like our Ulster County parcel rule? So, uh, um, right. Was, we, we made that map, I mean, you know, that the last one I was at. Right. And essentially all it was is GIS data. It's a right. parcel, it's Ulster County parcel here, mm -hmm. where we took parcels and then we took uh, federal wetlands and, and state wetlands from the, that are known, that are not accurate, because like you said, they're from aerial photos. Yeah. Not being on the property, put those on the map, and that's it. That's all that map ever was. And there's bigger versions of it, but my, I think at a minimum it should be updated because it, I don't know if those are still the GIS layers from 12 years ago, but um, I think it should at least be updated to the GIS, they change. Um, but as far as like map, changing that map every time you do a site, that's something that's much trickier. Not only, you know, trying to show that on this map, but also you know, who's going to pay for that every time you know you update that map. And there's, I think it gets more complicated. But that's essentially all that map was, is or really is, is Ulster County Parcel. And I don't know if it would change if you redid it because the federal wetlands mapping hasn't changed. The DEC wetlands, I know they update them once in a while, but. They don't change very much. I, I don't think you'd see a lot of change if you redid this. From those, from those. So, I mean, the point you're bringing up about, I mean, our code says that once a year he's supposed to update the maps based on what he's been finding out in the field. But he's saying it's not, and everybody's saying scale-wise it's kind of difficult. And you're saying who pays for it? And that's a very good question because the code doesn't address that. So that's a part of the code of the enforcement of the code that we're having difficulty with because there's a, so this is part where the town board needs to go back and say, okay, now what do we do about it? And Liz Lyle, did you have any, did they, was that ever discussed, like how that was? Okay, it was a kind of fine I think I basically would start with, they would have to have the, the, the desire to do so and then request a proposal and find out what's, what is it going to really cost mm -hmm. and, and then decide if they still want it, you know? Right. I don't think that we can we can hang on him just because he has a job to no. that he, there's anything he can do. Right. Right. But I, I think that should be part of our report is that this is an item identified as being a gray area or something that's not clear. Same thing with the annual report that he does. It's like, okay, so yeah, how is all this supposed to be dealt with and do they want to put it as a budget item and then how much money do they think they want to spend on it or something? I don't know. Or they can't be. Spend. You've done all the work all year. Hand it over to the county and let them update once a year. Well, I think the annual report. I'm sorry. 
One option could be is to identify the parcels that have had a study on them. So as you go through the process, New Pole Storage now has a map on file with, with a delineated wetland on it. Without going through the effort of putting on that map, you know, you make that parcel yellow or whatever it is. And then it's up to the applicant to go if it. there's a file to go through the file and, and you know, that might be a way to make it's it more find easy. To know that it's been updated. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, good idea. I mean, the, the landowner gets some kind of notification or, yeah, they get it. But then it's like, yeah, so how do we make it clear? What, can I ask what percentage of wetlands have been delineated in the last 10 years? Oh. On that map? Of parcels in the town? Of parcels in the town. Two percent, So two Small. parcels? Two, two percent of the parcels in the town. Okay. That's a lot, I guess. Not a lot. So I think that's a good system. Because otherwise it's going to be ridiculously time consuming. Unless he walks the town every year. Well, he's only going out and doing it when applicants come in. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if we have that on file yeah, every reasonable. time he does that, yeah. Yeah. and then we know now, like, okay, he did, you know, there's 40 parcels that have been done in the last five years. And people can look and say, okay, these 40 have been done. I'm near one of those. I may have to do something. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think that's a good start, right? To indicate if there's anything there on each parcel, but it's definitely not a tell all Right. For sure. And, and that's the intention of this map, right. is just right. to give someone an indication that they might be in a wetland. Yeah, I think updating airport. that map is a mere impossibility. I mean, it would take tons of money and a lot of time. So I think what we're asking is there a way to do like some kind of way or trigger or something that just says, yeah, there's stuff here that doesn't show up, and how do you find it? Because, so the idea of the freebie is that pretty much as you go and you do a yes or no, it's like, yeah, you probably have wetlands, or no, you don't. You know, like what you've been doing, not not anything real discreetly definitive, just right. giving somebody an idea so that they can start to do their planning. But then if they come with any kind of application, and you go out and you do do what you have been doing, so that's, it's just, a, it's accretion by well, yeah. random, you know. You only get the call from somebody if they think they're on that map, right? Not everybody calls you. Uh, well, I don't get... The calls come through the building department. Right. right. So, so the only reason you do that is if it's not, a, it's, oh, there's a lot of parcels that are not near wetlands at all. So there's no phone call that happens. There's no, right? When it goes to the building department. Yeah, she looks on that map and says, and, and, right. I get it. So Amanda, do you think that would work? Which thing? What, 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 what um, Matt was just talking about, updating it as we do, you know, maybe as we do each year, just by saying this part, indicating that it had been updated, that That's parcel. I, th I, th I think beyond, like, not the effort to update a map is, is very time consuming. And if it's not time consuming, it's not going to be very accurate. But maybe something like just an, an asterisk on that plot parcel saying that it's been looked at as, or, or that there's something there. And then you know, it's not the idea of mapping the whole thing, but just to trigger that it might be beyond what, what you see in the, the, the layers, you know? And there might yeah. be more information in the file from mm -hmm. when I visited right. it. And then yeah. the yeah. That it's been touched, in other words, yeah. yeah. And then you put it on the app, you could say, look, there's been a study on this parcel. It's up to you to go through the file and, and bring that information to us. That way the town's not paying for it. The applicant should pay for it. They're trying to develop that property. They've been doing Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, so yeah, I, I believe the intent was that when by happenstance these things showed up, they, they it was captured. So it wasn't just found once and then lost again, but that it was captured somehow. And there was some, some way of noting, you know, every time that he finds something because someone's asked him to look, that it's now there so that yeah. There's something that says, yeah, go go back and check. There's something that was found at that So, point. Amanda, your idea is that he, he writes an annual report, and we review it and make comments and forward it on to the town board. Is that correct? No. We are required to create a... You create three. We create a report. His information is, is background information about everything that's been happening. Our report is how is the wetlands code working? as far as what we're doing with the plan. But how can we tell until we've seen this report? 
do things happen on the time frame they're supposed to? Does he go out and do what he's asked to do? Does the ENCB get back to us? With, you know, it's so like, did we pick a good wetlands inspector? Are we having a problem? You know, so that's, our report is, how is the yeah, but how do we how do we evaluate that? I don't have any information on that. I don't, I don't know how many times he goes out. And well, we're not getting sued. Yeah, and we've gone on site holding up applications right. based on wetlands, so there's one indicator, right? right? We haven't been sued yet. So that's a good indicator we're doing it on a good timeline. Yeah. He's been pretty responsive when things come in to work with the um, work with the landowners and you know, so we haven't been getting any complaints. Like we, I've called the wetland inspector five times and he hasn't showed up, he's in return my calls. We're not getting that kind of stuff. So that's one part of it. Um, as somebody who's you know, first arc of, of experience has been here. The wetlands I've found to be the most complicated to understand and the most difficult, but it seems to me that we have it even when they're difficult, like the um, Ferris Wood. We're it's it's works the process whatever process we have now the site visits we get we don't get hung up on it right. we move through it right. so perhaps the issue that we would address would be the archiving of those it seems to be what we're noting seems to be i think mm -hmm. the whole process seems to work really well especially including the site visits mm -hmm. i can't think of anything just from my experience this past year that in in respect of wetlands that's been a, where we just you know that it, we stopped we moved through it but i think the marking is good right because for example the, the Ferris Woods, if say they ever wanted to, they had gone through that. If they ever want, that was ever sold, that property was sold, then it's archived that the wetlands okay. have been detailed there, and that's of use. And it's of use to, to the, the people involved with the buy, buying and selling as well. Right. It's almost like a service. Right. Yeah. Do, you, do we as a board feel that applicants are aware of our um, wetlands code and know enough about it that there's enough um, transparency on the website or in the code. Yes, it's, it's like any other part of the code. If you're a developer, you need to know what the code is, whether it's building heights or wetlands. You got to know what the code is. So sometimes we get big projects and you have engineers and all that. Sometimes we get little homeowners, you know, doing some little thing. And so, you know. Um, and, and so when you start reading the code, all 50 pages of it, there's stuff in there about notice of determinations and permits and, and permits with, with contingencies or denying permits. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we haven't had to deal with. We well, we can't be responsible for the education level of the person that's applying to do something. Whether they understand it, they can't comprehend it, they need to get somebody who can. Right. Do we all understand? I understand it enough. I don't understand. I ask him. And then I read all forty-nine yeah. pages. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but that's, that's but that's but you know that's if that's what it takes. I mean, I, I you know as somebody who hasn't had this background and is learning as we go, I haven't found it to be an obstacle in any way. So one of the one of the one of the possible you know one of the proposals was that perhaps we have you know like we had a secret training session that maybe we have a wetlands code training session. Maybe we have between Mark and, and our attorney, you know, someone who comes in, or the ENCB or somebody, you know, comes in and, and gives us a little bit, you know, or Lyle who helped write it, you know, just walks us through some of it, you know, the big pieces of it at least so that we... I would find that useful. Okay. I mean, it's just an idea. Or if we were going to do public outreach, I think it's a good idea, and if we were to do public outreach, that would be a subject perhaps that we were going to have, say, hold uh, some session for the public, things that they could do, you know, like a, like a free session that they could learn about if they were thinking perhaps, you know, later in the year of, of doing something on their property. That would be a subject we could do. That is an interesting point, though, because if you own a wetland, which I do, um, there are rules in the code and if you're just a homeowner and you buy your house, Ooh, yeah. you know what I mean? You're like, yeah. holy crap, I can't do this. I can't, like, I, I mean, and that's going to require enforcement issues. Like, 
there's all kinds of things like and it, it impacts insurance and all kinds. Well, of no, not really. It doesn't impact insurance. It just it just you don't know exactly what you can do unless you know. Like I know enough to look. Yeah. Like most people, okay. I think, would just do whatever they want to do. I mean, we could have a public service session on that, that in, and maybe some other things, but or not. But I think for us to have an, a, a, a workshop would be very good. I agree. So I like that. It would I, be, like I like that. that it would be community. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, a, it's an issue. issue. If we're yeah. having it, that we have, you know, the NCB knows about it. You guys know about it. Um, you know, any, any town board members who would want And we could have a pub, just a, maybe even a, well, if we decided to take it public, we just have, you know, notice in the paper, yeah. and notice on Facebook, whatever. That people it might be helpful maybe for we can do an hour. local engineers, it might be helpful Probably for, for meeting at six o'clock. you know, okay. Let's try and organize that. People. Yep. Okay. okay. I think anything else? Do you have anything else right now? Anything else? Um, so as far as, okay, so, so we, so we missed the deadline for 2019, but I don't think that means we shouldn't do it or wait till next year. I think we should think about this like in October or November next year, because it's due on the 10th of December, um, as to whether we've had any issues with working with this part of the county about the administration, the advocacy, the enforcement. And so like right here, we're talking about archiving is an enforcement aspect that we're having, having trouble with, like coming up with the, you know, so we need to, we need to find. We need to either have a proposal um, to, to somehow mark. I'm not sure what the appropriate way is to mark the files so that it's like maybe. I think that you know, I think the easiest way to do is each parcel on that has is, is a line, mm -hmm. its own line, mm -hmm. and you would make it yellow or blue or whatever so that that parcel looks different than Colored. the rest of the parcels, and then the legend that parcel. This wetland study has been done on this parcel. The date. In the last whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. In the last, yeah, and then, then be up to them triggers yeah. them to look into the file. Okay. And that, that, I mean, I listed six properties here where I delineated the wetland in some fashion, but someone mentioned Ferris Woods. I mean, there was a wetland delineation down there. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. Right. That was part of the applicant's process. So right. there's. So they've got it somewhere. There's those yeah. as well. Yes, yeah, sometimes yeah. they have their own engineers mm -hmm. do it, but then we still have our guy go out and say, do we agree? And they change. Yeah, yeah, they do change. Yeah, and I don't think it means that that's the wetland. I think it means that the applicant needs to go get that information and bring it to the board and say, it was delineated, but it wasn't validated by our town or whatever it is. Right. Yeah, yeah, there needs yeah. to be, yeah, definitely needs to be some sort of, like, in, an indication of who did it. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's much different if it's him versus... Oh yeah. Well, maybe one could be bottom. green and one could be yellow, you know, in terms of the designation that it was done by the applicant versus done by our, our person. Mm -hmm. But again, we're only talking about 2% of yeah, all of the properties. So it's easy, yeah. Right. But it's as we go along, yeah, every year, we're going to add yeah. a couple, you know. So, um, so, so Mark says the map right now isn't to the level of showing individual parcels, but it could be, right? Like somehow. I mean, you can see individual parcels, just most it's of them small. are small. It's just small. small. <laughs> map. It it make it a big There's a much bigger bird. There's a full size map of that. So that big, you know, I mean, you can... The size of the town. No, it's not like yeah, it's huge. Huge. If you go on the Ulster County parcel there, you can overlay you can it digitally. It. Right. Yeah. And just hit wetland and it clicks on and then it shows you exactly. That's the same right. information he has. It's just a little tiny map. But just yeah. because it's bigger doesn't yeah. mean that they're right. any less no. inaccurate. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So, so one of the things is we would propose that there be some color coding of parcels that have been, had wetland studies done by our town wetland inspector and the date, um, and that that work has to be, someone's going to have to pay for that work. So they would have to come up with a, somebody's got to go through and do that. Thing, so. Wasn't that, I and mean, if the project came before you and somebody looks at that map, that parcel is yellow. Yeah, but somebody's got to go make it yellow. That's what I'm saying. Right. So that's that's some kind of project that's going to require some time and money. It's a lot less time than actually trying to put the wetland. Oh, yeah. Right. It's not even right. the same. Right. Yeah, but yeah, somebody still has to do that. Okay. And so when it's that color and somebody has to go look for the study, where's the study in your files? In their the ones, the ones that I delineated are in my files. But the property owner has a copy, right? Uh, yes. If, if it was connected to a planning board application, the town would have it for the department of Okay. And some of them are, but others are just my, my free visit. 
So those don't get. Those are yes or no, but not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should get updated once a year. At the end of the year. That's what the code the says. Town yeah. board That's what the code accepts says. it. Yeah. All right. Maybe you need to think about what that entail and how much time and money you're talking about, so that we can make a proposal to the board. I mean. It, Maybe you could be in something a little more simpler, like every time Mark does something, he just has like an Excel sheet as an index by SPL number, mm -hmm. where you know he goes out, puts the SPL number down. He could put the type of visit it was. If it was just a freebie, it could be a weapon present. Yes, if it was you know an actual planning board application, he could put down the application name. That way, that information could be there and just sit in the uh, building department. And then they have to know they have it so that when someone comes in, this Well, and that would be the thing. If someone wants to come in and do something, they could, the building department could have that list that they could okay. okay. So we just okay. need to work with the building department. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this, okay. Sorry. I just, I'm curious. Happen. So when someone has you come out to their house and do a freebie, are they just, they're going to do something and they want to just make sure they're not near the buffer? Is that what's, is that why they call you? Yeah. Or why well, Stacy tells you yeah. to know whatever it is? Yes. And they're, they're like, proposing they want to put up something. a shed, yeah. but they want to know where the, huh? And then they apply for a permit, and then she'll deny it if they have to do a short form. Okay. On a wetlands permit. Does that happen pretty frequently, or? Uh, a dozen or more times over the last year. It yeah. doesn't, it doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah. I'd say a lot of that. I'm curious. Just curious. Oh, yeah. But it's That's for everyone's service. benefit. Yeah. Everyone's benefit. Yep. So Absolutely. Okay, cool. All right, so oh, I have a bad feeling I'm going to ask this next question. Who's going to draft no. this report? <laughs> you are. Who is Why did I say that? You wrote everything down already. Right? You're, <laughs> you're halfway done. Surprise, surprise yeah. what we've said. And, okay, yeah. It's like, it doesn't have to be 10 pages. It's not going to be 10 pages, but it's just going to be. Okay, okay so I'll make, I'll make a little draft thingy that you guys can see for the next meeting. <laughs> But next, next fall, when it's time to do this. Not it. <laughs> Starting now. We're going to rotate it. Someone else is going to do it. Okay. And if this, get, if this gets appended to it, I'd like to just, I wrote draft on it. Yeah, and no, if please. we're going to finalize it, I just want to give you a fresh copy. With so anything. did everybody look at it? I looked at it. Can, can you, is, are you changing anything? Are you good? Depends on what you tell me. If there's comments, I, I, I looked at it. I, I wouldn't say thoroughly. So he had sent it out once, and ENCB has given us some comments. I gave him some comments. And said, you know, just if you, you know, so he listed all the violations he was asked to go look at, and we just said, you know, just confirm if you said yes, it was a violation, you know, it wasn't. What happens? We're not. That's a whole other story about what happens after the violations. I think that's another kind of. Mark, would you mind sending it to me again? And me too, please. And allow. Should I send it to Pat? I would just like, because it, it, it was Christmas and New Year's, I like to just look it over. Yeah, somehow. Okay. Do you have it or should I resend it? I, I have the last one. Okay. Yeah, it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. Okay. A couple of the places where there were violations, at least one of them is one of the properties that we've talked about here. Um, well, two actually. There's a couple of them. There's the Rose Lane and there's the Ohio Road. So, you know, what's happened with that or mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, then, then that's where you have to go follow up with the Right. I often don't know what's happened after my visit, and I write a memo. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, Mark, can I just ask you a question? Like, how, how many? I'm, I'm just curious. How many hours do you spend on a visit, or how many? How many hours do you spend a year on on this whole thing? This is not a full-time job, right? You're, no. You, oh, no. You have other things. Oh, yeah. Do. No, I'm just trying to figure out, like, it, it seems like the, the, the town's paying you for these free visits. Yes. So we should get some information out of it, whether it's a formal report or, or some yeah. kind of a notation. Oh, yeah. That, that Stacy would have that, okay, he was out there, and if, if years down the line somebody applies for a building permit there, she'll, she'll have some kind of a notation that it, that it was looked at before. Yeah, yeah, she does. Okay. I write a, I, I spend maybe an hour on a visit, tops. The freebie um, ones. Yeah. The freebie ones. We probably spend an hour beforehand because we prepare maps of the, mm -hmm. of the okay. individual property. And then I write a memo okay. afterwards. 
and send it to either Pat or Stacy, depending on who it came from. So no, I'm just trying to get a sense yeah. of how much this wetlands law is. What is it? What's the cost benefit you know, right. to a town? Yeah, yeah, and it's always you know I know that the freebie is the town is paying for it, and once there's an application and then the applicant's paying for it. So I'm conscious of that and. I don't go to the freebie and do a detailed wetland delineation yeah. and yeah. sit down at their kitchen table and talk to them for four hours, you know, because it's a, it's the freebie. Yeah. Uh, so. so that's thirty hours a year. Maybe he's doing twelve. But that's very good public oh, service, I think. Well, he said okay. one hour prepping, one hour there, and then writing a memo. Twelve yeah, times a year. and it's it's two and a half it, hours. those are probably on average, you know, bigger sites. So a little take more. a little longer. Right? Yeah. So one thing you don't have in your report are those freebies. Like how many you did, and maybe locations if it's not too much. Right. Um, yeah, because I just listed all the, the applications and pre-applications. Okay. So I could divide those into the ones that are formal applications and which ones are <coughs> visit. Okay. And you have them identified by map numbers, like lot plot he numbers. Has not in here, I don't. But, but you do it when you uh, I do in my office. You look up ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. So if you were keeping this kind of the Excel spreadsheet thing, um, that would be something you could just attach. If you would just keep, you could just throw that on as an attachment. Okay. You just, I mean, it's just a thought. If you don't like it, but it was just yeah. a thought that that would be a useful thing. That right. You could just update here into the room. There's also violations, which that's similar. I get calls for violations or potential violations. And I, vis I visited, I think, four or five of those, and they're similar. An hour, you know, of prep and some time at the site. So, so this doesn't involve the planning board, unless it has to be an no. application, but I mean, it's a couple of them have. We don't do enforcement. And, and the town is paying for those as well, as far as I know. Oh, not the applicant, not the staff. No, oh. not the person complaining. Well, or the or the the violating. person who's violating. <laughs> yeah, or possibly violating. Mm -hmm. So the person who's complaining could be our own our own code enforcement. It could be ENCB. It could be a neighbor. It could be anybody. Mm -hmm. And he has to go out and confirm or not confirm. Mm -hmm. But the, but all of them you've confirmed, right? None of them are not violations. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So, um, are we going to go back? We're going to go back. Go back. Go back. Did we have to just pat out the note when Amy left. Okay. I mean, she left. Well, you, you're not taking any action. She left. Well, right we might right now. We'll find out. So we're going to talk about the interior renovation. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. plaza. So yeah. I don't quite understand. There's no exterior renovation except for the doors. That's why it's a simplified site. Right. So there's. Do we have to type it and all that stuff too? No. Do we really need to say so every action you do has to comply with CEDAR, even um, if it's an interior renovation. No, simplified site plans. Yes. If it if it's a discretionary action by the board, it requires CEDAR. It doesn't matter. Have we been doing a secret for so long? I don't think so. I don't think we have. One of the requirements is that it's too. Yeah. So they so don't. So we need secret. to type it. Right. And that's the type two. We don't have to do a secret. Right. That's well, that is doing it. Right. That is. That is. Oh, okay. uh, 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 so is that done already? No, we have to do we that. We have to type it, but. So I just had a couple of questions. Are they adding two doors or one door? One. Yeah. One double door. Stacy says adding two access two doors. doors, and you said adding the front two doors. Yeah. They're taking four, there's 6,000 square feet of dollar, dollar, whatever, just a buck. Just a buck. They're taking 4,000 square feet of it, 4,200, right. and leaving 2,000 empty. And they're putting, to, to put a, uh, more doctor's offices, uh, pediatric mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then they're putting a door in front and a door in the back for oh. Oh. required by code. Oh, for the new retail. Okay, because right. Stacy said in addition, uh, other than the addition of the front door. That's why I thought it was one. <laughs> yeah, so I thought it was one also. But you're saying they're adding two access doors. Right? Uh, there's, there's two doors. 
Yeah. Does the applicant will need to add an entrance door for the retail space, other than the addition of the front door, the exterior changes for site changes, it says. The exit might already be there, depending on how they're configuring the space. Yeah, it says Again, other, yeah. interior is the key. Because what she says is, other than the addition of the front door, there are no exterior changes for site changes. <coughs> yeah. New Hollow meddles their narrative from the applicant. New Hollow meddles the work. And the rear wall will also need to be installed so a potential tenant can She's access the utility room without disturbing the other tenant. Just miss. Okay, so she missed a door. But so yeah, it's right on the plant too. Okay, so two doors. There's one in the front, one in the back. So, so this is where I kept confused because we're talking about 6,000 square feet and they're taking 4,000 of what to do. And yet we said it's not more than 50% because it's of the, the whole building. Is that how? Because we're looking at it this, but now we're looking at it this. I'm confused. Yeah. Well, uh, what, I mean, I think it's. Yeah, of the building gross floor area. Yeah, the gross so, floor area, yeah. which is the whole building. It's divided up in different spaces, but it's one building. So does the whole building include ShopRite? Yeah. Okay, so that's one giant building that's been divided into yeah. parts. Yeah. Okay. So. Unless ShopRite does something, nobody's going to be more than 50%. Right? Well, yeah, ShopRite, if ShopRite renovates the space. I think it's more than 50%. Okay. Okay, so we can type this. Okay. And a motion to type this as a type 2 action. I make a motion to, uh, what's the name of it? Caramel? Yes. Right? Uh, to it type. It's ShopRite. Well, Eagle Loop Holds LLC. Yeah, I don't know. this. Yeah, that's what I don't know. Uh, I make an, a motion to type the MCB Eagle Newport LLC ShopRite Plaza space as a type two action. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we type it. We just typed it. Been typed. Um, what can we do next to give this? Out of. Uh, um, okay. This is a use. This is where you're we're going to wave the simplified wave site, site. Yeah. wave site plan. For us. Yes, like and we can do that, and then we're done. To uh, wave the site plan, yeah. to to approve. We we say we agree to simplify. I move to wave the site plan. Did somebody just move that? Yeah. 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 You good with that? Stacy says we wave the site plan. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think they can. We have a motion. I just wait okay. the site plan. Yeah, I move to wait yeah. the site plan. Site plan review. Site plan review. Thank you. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We're good. Is this our new official calendar? Okay, so anything now? else? So Do we have to vote on the calendar? No. I'm sorry. Well, we vote. We don't vote on the calendar. Calendar? I just love voting. I just want to vote for something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let our boss take care of the German. Alright. Well, I was going to have time to. Michelle. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. 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 Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.